there's nothing quite like Dutch oven food. And Kelly and I are going to show you how to cook your own. Stay tuned. Hello everyone, welcome to beautiful Valley of Fire, Nevada. I'm Joanne Lightheart. And I am Kelly. And introducing Little Bear. He's the latest of our fur babies. Now today we're gonna to talk about Dutch ovens. Pretty obvious, right? But what we wanna talk about is how to get you started. Have you ever been discouraged? Have you tried Dutch oven cooking and it didn't quite work? Or do you have a couple Dutch ovens sitting in the garage? I'll tell you what, for, from Kelly and I's standpoint, they completely changed the way we camp. We have so many different options to cook. We've taught classes. We've had so much fun. So, do you have Dutch ovens at home? Maybe sitting out in the garage and you've never used them? Or did you even give them a try and didn't have real good success with it? Maybe everything burned. What we're gonna do is walk you through how to be successful Dutch oven cooking. And we're gonna show you the minimum items that you need. And then we're gonna kind of show you some of the specialty things that we like to, to have along. Absolutely. Um, as you see here in the table, there's a lot of stuff on the table and we will get to each and every item that we have here on the table also here on the ground. Uh, so let's go ahead and start with a lid puller over here. Okay. There are many different kinds of lid pullers that uh, one can use. Uh, the most common is one of these single hand pullers. You can get them from uh, ranch stores. You can probably get them from Home Depot. Um, you can sure as get them from Sportsman's Warehouse. Where, yeah, all Sportsman's Warehouse. Do it. And all that does is it goes inside of the, of the hand loop here and it just hooks inside that and you grip tight and pull the lid off. What that does is you've got briquettes all along the outside of this lid and it's making it good and secure so they don't fall into your food or worse off fall onto you and burn you. People who don't have that and you're just starting off and you're just not quite sure if you want to get into this maybe you like Joanne said you were given a Dutch oven at some point and it's stuck in the garage, get a pair of pliers, channel locks. They're a great little item to do the same thing. You just, you just hook onto it, grab it, pull the lid off. Now, mind you, it's not as secure, but it will, it's still plenty safe. It will, be, it will stay where you want it to stay. People also use a claw hammer. Claws, they're not just for pulling nails anymore. At least not out here in the belly of fire. You take the claw, you bring the claw inside of that little finger loop and you pick up on it and there you go. It's another safe way of taking the lid off of whatever touch of the year we're working on. It doesn't matter the size of it. The lid, is just, the lid is just a little bit heavier. Then if a person just can't get a, have a hammer and they, maybe they went camping and the only thing they have is a pair of tongs. A pair of tongs will work, just be a lot more safe with it and be very much more careful because those briquettes are extremely hot. Just take this here, put it on inside, use both hands and lift the lid off. That one there is what I would use in a matter of extremes when I don't have anything else. Now you will need, because what we're gonna do is we're gonna teach you to, to cook with charcoal briquettes. And the reason we do that is because it's repeatable and it's the easiest way to learn. And then once you've got your skills built up on controlling heat, understanding how everything works, then you can move into real coals and, and cooking over the campfire. But to begin with, we're just gonna go ahead and use briquettes. And these are how you move briquettes around. You just can just flick them right on the oven and you can put it underneath they work real good and they're not very expensive. So if you're going out to get your first oven, there's a couple things you need to be aware of. First is you wanna get a camp oven. Now the camp oven has the lids with the ring around the outside. That keeps the charcoals from falling off. 
Also, the camp ovens have legs on the bottom. And those legs, of course, allows you to set it right on top of the charcoal and be able to cook. Now, something else to be aware of is most ovens will come in a couple different sizes. This would be considered a shallow oven. This is considered a deep oven. Now, if you're, if you're wanting to do a lot of biscuits and stuff like that, then the shallow oven is better because you get a lot of top heat. And that way you can get nice golden brown biscuits. The tops and the bottoms are really nice. If you want to do roasts and chickens and stuff Cakes. like that, then the deeper oven, of course, is the better choice. I agree, I agree 100%. Uh, like she said, uh, the shallow ovens is, is non-rising biscuits. So they'll, they'll rise a little bit. If you're gonna be doing something that's gonna rise quite a lot, you're gonna want the deeper oven so you have more air, more space from the briquettes to the top of, the, uh, of whatever you're baking so it does not burn. Yeah, so like when we do bread, yep. right? We do the bread loaves. And if you do it in something like this, it'll rise up, it'll make contact with the lid and you'll end up with a burnt top. Absolutely. But if you cook one in the, in the bigger in a deep. oven, then it goes ahead and it rises up but then it never makes contact with the lid. So that's a good thing to do. Absolutely. So that's kind of the, just the, a quick overview. The other thing is, this is a 12 inch oven. We've got a, a 10, 10 inch. We've got a five. A five. So they come in all kinds of different sizes, depending on what you want to do. And before you decide this one's just a little toy. No, it's not. If you got two people and you want to cook a side dish, like some, some beans or something like this, this is perfect for that, yeah. right? You throw a couple charcoals on it, or one of the ones that a friend of mine used to do that was really lovely was a, he would roast a, a head of garlic. Yeah. And that was wonderful. A little butter on that and roast the garlic and it was just wonderful. So all of these are useful. In fact, we'll have a picture where Kelly made pineapple upside down cake in one of these. Pineapple upside down cake for one. Yep. Beautiful. Just beautiful. And they have come out with they have came out with an anodized aluminum unit. They are very good at what they do. They're light. I mean feather light. They cut this kit here comes with, I believe, three different sizes, two different sizes of um, Dutch ovens. And the it's got feet on them. Okay, one has feet, okay. one's flat. And the flat one would be great to put in your oven at home also. The main thing that you've got to really keep in mind when it comes down to aluminum is they will get hot faster, which means they will lose the heat faster, which also means when you're baking or cooking in it, you've got to keep a stronger eye on it and maintain, just, just do more visual on it so you don't burn what you're trying to make up while you're camping. You just don't want to burn your food. These are great. They're, they're, they're much lighter. Um, that's another alternative. And the other thing that's, I mean, some of you guys are gonna wince when we bring out aluminum foil. I know we've, we understand that there's a purist to the whole cast iron thing and, and we love our cast iron, but there are times when it's rainy or maybe you're going on a canoe cruise uh, trip or something like that where you just can't bring along a lot of heavy cast iron that's going to rust and so if you're comfortable cooking in Dutch ovens these do a nice job I I baked bread in one of these just to see how it would work B made a real nice loaf and they work fine you know there's people that will tell you that, oh I would never use a, a, an aluminum Dutch oven let me tell you what that's one reason to be able to do it right there so if, if the idea of heavy cast iron puts you off, you can use these. Don't worry about it. You Absolutely. Know, some people will kind of tip their nose up at Let you. Let them. But don't worry about that. These work just fine and they cook well. What is this? Well, that's my frying pan. Thank you very much. That's your frying pan? Yes, it is my frying pan. My daughter has been talking about portion control and I don't want to eat something from this pan. So I go down to this pan. So everything that I can eat 
fits in here, and it'll make me slimmer for summers. <laughs> well, that's my hope. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> we'll see how that one works out. Uh, now there's a number of ways you can cook. You can cook on the ground, like in a campfire, like this. This is a plow harrow. It's just the disc. And we weld a couple legs onto it. We can cook right on top of that. Or one of the ones that we used a lot was just taking an old oil pan that's clean, couple rocks, put it in there, grab your oven, you put your charcoal in there, set it up on top, more charcoal, and that way you can cook without destroying the table that's sitting out here. Depending on the height of the bricks, won't hurt it at all. If you're at a park and there's grass, same thing. This will keep your, your charcoal up off the grass, won't damage the grass. And that way you can cook. Also, it's a little bit more convenient. If you get a little bit older, like some of us are starting to get, having this up a little bit's kind of nice to cook. So real simple, Hold on. almost anything will work. Are you picking on me again about being old? Nope, nope, me. You look right at me. Well, if the if the shoe fits, is, is there something about that? Mm, if the pan fits. <laughs> if the pan fits, cook in it. There you go. Anyway, so, and talking about briquettes, this is a starter. We use these because they're real convenient. We're going to show you just a little bit more about them in the near, probably in the next video. There's some techniques you can use with these that uh, makes it work real easy. And uh, that way you've always got a bunch of charcoal because there's nothing worse than being like five minutes from, from uh, the time you want to sit down and eat. And you don't have enough charcoal to finish your meal. So you don't want to be able to do that. Always have a little bit of extra, extra charcoal. It's cheap relative to uh, not being able to have a, a fully cooked meal. Absolutely. Not that that's ever happened to us. That's never... <clears throat> Not to me. No. Nope, I'm Not, perfect. We've never had that happen. So you learn lessons the hard way on <laughs> yeah. stuff like this. Most definitely. So what we're going to talk about right now is the skillet. A lot of you guys have this in your camp cook uh, pile, right? All your, your cooking in, uh, implements. Or even in your kitchen at home. Or in your kitchen at home. Now, I'll show you some pictures. You can do biscuits in here with charcoal, right? Put charcoal around here, or you use one of these. Charcoal around that, set it right there. And this has got a flat rim. You just put charcoal right around there. Never in the middle, folks. Keep that in mind. Never in the middle on the bottom. Don't ever put a briquette or heat in the middle at the top or in the bottom. That will make your food very untasty. So, while we're doing this, if you find yourself out and you don't have one of your Dutch ovens and stuff like that, this becomes not just a skillet, but it's also a pizza oven because you could put a nice pizza right in there. I do this all the time. Put pizza in here, pizza dough, the sauce, cheese, all your wonderful toppings. Put a bunch of charcoal on top of this, charcoal underneath, and you've got yourself camp pizza. If you've got kids, you know how important <laughs> pizza is to keep the family happy. Now I'm gonna show you a little trick that not a lot of people know about. Now, this skillet is a lodge skillet. The lid is a lodge, but right here I have a 12 inch lodge camp oven lid. Well, guess what? It's there you go. Perfect fit. Now you have a shallow oven. So you don't have to bring necessarily a whole lot of extra uh, iron if you're trying to reduce your weight. You got your skillet, you got your lid. This is perfect, again, for making pizza. It's perfect for uh, any place that you want to keep a little bit of top heat. Buttermilk biscuits. Buttermilk biscuits, we do cinnamon rolls. And in fact, we'll demonstrate this for you in Absolutely. future videos, how to be able to do this. No different than any other oven. You just gotta be a little careful of your top heat because everything's pretty close. But that's the bonus for you. 
Right. Well, no, we no, got another yet. bonus, don't we? We have a surprise one. Yep, we yeah, do. We're going we're gonna to give you another bonus. <clears throat> so let's let's load this one. Up. So the, we're talking pizza here. Twelve inch lid. Who doesn't like pizza? But <clears throat> but that won't do. We have this ring that's been over here on the side of the table. You're probably wondering what well what's it for? Well, <clears throat> this is your oven for your pizza. 12 inch lid, 12 inch circle, slides right on the lid. Another lid goes on top of that. There is your perfect pizza Dutch oven, oven pizza oven. Yep, absolutely. The ring itself is approximately three and a half to four inches uh, width. And that comes out of a standard five gallon um, propane, propane tank. tank. Now. If you don't know how to take care of one of those and open it up, fill it with water and do all that, don't, don't do this. Go to a machine shop and have them roll you one of these. You Absolutely. Can, any metal shop could, could roll you one of these, put a quick weld on it. Yes. But if, you, if you're comfortable and you know how to, how to deal with propane tanks, it just so happens that your five gallon tank is the exact diameter you want to make yourself a pizza oven. And we have made more pizza and served more pizza out of this than you can imagine <clears throat> because it's quick. The nice thing is the pizza is on the, the bottom of the, the lid. You're not trying to slide it out of a skillet, right? So you're not trying to dig under it. It's sitting right there for you. You cut it, move it to a plate, done. Get the next one on, get the next one baking. You can put out a lot of pizza this way. And you know what? Maybe we'll invite some friends out. Oh, be nice. And and just cook up a nice meal and show you what that's about and, and just kind of share that friendship with you. Okay, so when we release this video, I'm gonna stay online for 15, maybe 20 minutes. And I'll answer the questions. I'll interact with you in the comments and stuff like that. So as soon as this video drops, don't just you know, skip by it, watch that video, and I will be staying, standing by in the comments section, and we'll sit and chat, have a little bit of a talk. Does that sound like fun? I think it sounds, sounds like fun, fun to me. Yeah, so anyway, thanks so much for joining us. We had a great time today. Sun's beautiful. We couldn't oh, ask for a nicer day, and it is gorgeous out here. Uh, if you come to Southern Nevada, this is a place that you might wanna stop by and, and spend a little time. <laughs> Bring Dutch ovens. And uh, I just want to say so long from Valley of Fire. Bye. Bye.